One of the toughest but truest lessons you have to learn as a goaltender is you are judged by the goals that you allow, not the saves that you make. I get asked all the time to define what a bad goal is. I mean, like I'm an expert on bad goals or something. But I feel like I am now, I've done a lot of homework, and I can define for you what a bad goal is. I consider a bad goal to be any goal that has less than a 10% chance of going into the net. Like all of these net plays that we're going to be looking at right now, it's a low percentage scoring opportunity. The Rangers have scored two goals on 46 net plays this season. Like this wraparound goal from Nick Holden versus Mike Condon, that qualifies as a bad goal. And in the same game, a clear sighted shot from the dead angle, also a bad goal. You can see why Ottawa lost this game. In fact, when the Rangers scored any combination of two or more bad goals in a game this season, they're a perfect 9-0. It's unreal. Although any rebound that comes off a net drive is a bad goal, I do want to point out that Rick Nash does a tremendous job of using the goaltender's pad as a rebound board on a low percentage net drive shot, but getting the puck back to himself and then scoring on the rebound. That's a really good example of turning a low percentage play into a play with a higher percentage to score. What can I say? It's a goal scorer's goal. Although this Sam Gagne shot doesn't look like a low percentage shot, for a goaltender that has clear sight for more than half of a second on a settled offensive zone attack, even though it's coming off of a giveaway, you still want your goaltender to make this save in 2017. Clear sighted rebound goals are also considered bad goals statistically, less than a 10% chance of going in. The reason why is because the expectation now is your goaltender not only stops the puck, but he controls it. You can see this play right here off the pads. It's above the faceoff dot, a long distance from net. You have to have the expectation that your goalie stops it and controls it. But watch how it differs from the Kevin Klein play in Edmonton at the beginning of the season. Klein gets over the faceoff dot, really close to the goaltender. He's expecting a shot on goal. It becomes very difficult to control the puck and Grabner comes in for the rebound. This is not a low percentage shot, therefore it does not qualify as a bad goal. Here are two more examples that sometimes get confused for higher percentage shots than they really are. Any shot from above the top of the circles on a lateral pass off the rush or in zone settled offense is a routine save for the goaltender because it's such a long distance from the net. Another look is coming from below the top of the circles on a pass that goes above the top of the circles on a one-timer. The thing about those sequences is the distance from the net allows the goaltender so much time and ability to achieve angle, depth, and squareness before the puck comes off the shooter's stick. Therefore, they would also qualify as a bad goal. There's not too many nights I watch hockey where a goalie isn't wearing a hat after two bad goals. Well, a bad goal in 2017 is a far cry from what a bad goal was in 2007 when I played, but I hope after looking at this project, you get a clear understanding of what a bad goal is so you can set your own expectations for your goaltender. Should help the coaches and parents understand what it is, and now going forward, you have a better understanding of how to value a performance.